and we're live. Um, it's late. It's nine o'clock. Well, almost nine o'clock here in the mountain time zone here in Boise at uh, the Idaho Freedom Foundation headquarters. This is our secret bunker uh, where we do all the limiting government type activities. Um, and of course, um, you know, we, we work on big projects. Uh, right now, I want to talk to you just very quickly. I know you're busy. I know you've got a lot of important things to do. But I want to make sure that um, I share with you the importance of one of the projects that we're working on right now, um, which is a, an upcoming short film entitled Hope Vetoed. I want to take you back. Um, you, you may or may not have seen... Um, you may or may not have seen some of our advertisements for Hope Vetoed. Um, I actually have one of the flyers right here. Um, and I'll, I'll tell you more about this in just a second. This is a wonderful young man. His name is, is Josh Phillips. Um, that's what you need to know for now. But I'll tell you how this kind of came about. Um, we received a grant from an organization that's allied with us. That's um, The grant was for to teach people like us and other... Um, other groups teach us how to do video. Um, it's it's pretty complex. Um, as I'm learning through this process, doing a video is not easy. It's not like, you know, to have a good, thoughtful video. Um, it's not like just go, getting on Facebook and hitting live and talking like some rambling guy for for a while. Instead, it's it's about being able to you know, do all the technical things correctly, do the video, um, get the audio right, get the lighting right, um, make sure that the, the questions are authentic um, and, and really get to the heart of your story. It's incredible how much work is goes into these things. So anyway, this group gave us a grant for some equipment and some training to do video. Um, that, was, that was the first step. The second step um, we heard about this this young man, um, this this Josh Phillips in Salmon, and he, the story was good. The story, from from the moment I heard the details of Josh Phillips' life and his struggle, I knew that I wanted to talk about him. I didn't know what exactly what form that would take, and initially this started out as a a journalism project only. I was going to write an IdahoReporter.com article uh, about Josh Phillips and leave it at that. Um, I did the interviews with Josh and his family. I, I got to know them a little bit over the phone, but. It was, it was just not enough, and I never actually wrote the articles, um, partially because I'm I'm busy and I should have, but the other part of me said, this deserves something a little bit more, and and this was early on in the year in February March I was still trying to figure out what we were going to do for our video project to fulfill the requirements of this grant that we were working on or, or that we had received, and so I thought to myself, you know, we really need to. Um, excuse me, let me remove my shades. Um, we really need to do a little bit more for this story because it is so good. Um, it's so important. And, and at the time, you know, sometimes I think conservative groups like ours um, don't do a great job of connecting uh, the big scary policy proposals that could hurt families. There's a lot of could, um, this will, we think this, this policy will hurt, you know, such and such population, but we don't ever connect the dots with this policy is in place and here's what it did or, you know, and, and come up with real life concrete examples of that. This was an instance where um, we could tell a story showing how a big government policy um, actually hurt a family and hurt a person individually and a really good person not of course I'm not saying that you know bad people deserve to get hurt that's absolutely not what I'm saying but but Josh and his family are just wonderful people so we decided on this project to to film for for our documentary and for our film project as part of the grant it uh, it wasn't easy to decide on this because we had we actually had some really humorous options. Uh, we were going to do um, three or four three minute humorous takes on on big government and, and spending and and just just some really weird stuff that wouldn't I think it would have turned out very well. 
um, Reina, our media specialist, is really good at um, developing those ideas, and they would have worked well. But this story was so much better um, because it, it's real, it's authentic, and it, it will twist your heart. Um, I wish I could tell you more about the story. I can't. Um, we're going to, I, I think in the next few days, we're going to release a, a just a small snippet of, of some of the filming that we did um, for Hope Vetoed. And I hope you'll appreciate it, um, and I hope you'll understand that there's so much more than that we could ever hope to uh, tell you about this family struggle. But I, I did want to share with you just uh, a thought or two about about this project. Um, Josh Josh Phillips again, and he's for those who are joining. There's not a ton of people here, but Josh Phillips. This is this is him. Um, sorry, there's a thing on the back. Anyway, he is a great young man. We filmed with his family in August, and for three days we spent hours with with uh, Jeanette and Gary and Josh and. Um, his sister Jennifer and, and uh, the brother Otto. They are a wonderful family and I am so blessed to have met them. Um, for three days we heard of their pain and their suffering. Um, we heard about Josh's seizures um, that were caused. He actually um, ran into a doorknob at age four and a half while he was playing uh, tag with his sister and from then on um, <clears throat> he was affected by these seizures. And for me, it got very personal because I have a four and a half year old son, or he's nearly five now. Um, and I love him to death. I love my son more than, more than almost anything on the face of this earth. And I do anything for my son. Um, and when I heard that Josh was, you know, from four and a half, he'd had these seizures, and he had, you know, the doctors initially thought they were muscle spasms, and nobody understood it until age 10 when he was diagnosed. I can't imagine the pain that that family was going through. Um, first of all, the, the pain that Josh experienced himself inside, not understanding the medical condition that, that he was dealing with, um, not understanding why he couldn't find a diagnosis. Um, I, I can't even fathom that. But also, um, his family, the, the pain that they felt and the, the confusion they must have felt and they wondered, they probably wondered why this happened to them, why, um, you know, why it had to be Josh and why he had to run into that doorknob on that day. Um, this was a special, special experience and, and the thing that I took away from this was not the family struggles. They've had so many. Um, you know, the, the father, Gary, who I love, um, he, he talked to us about how Josh had fallen so many times and he'd put, put holes in the, uh, the, the family sheetrock in their bathroom because he'd fall down from a seizure um, and just plow into the wall. Um, how he would, Josh would actually be on the wrestling mat and, and he'd be doing, you know, he'd actually be in the middle of a match or a practice or whatever and he would have a seizure, a, maybe a petite mall, which is a small seizure, and he would um, forget the moves that he was doing and he would either lose the match or he'd get called for a foul. I don't understand wrestling as well as I should probably, but called for a foul or some type of uh, infraction um, because he just wasn't there um, because of his seizure. Um, there are two special moments. I won't talk about them right now because they're too, even though they didn't happen to me, they're too tender for me to talk about um, outside of the film. You have to see the film to understand um, really where Josh Phillips is from and why we love him and admire him. Um, they both happened during his senior season. Um, and if you're from Salmon, if you if you know the the wrestling program, if you know um, if you've been there a while, you know what happened. Um, and, and I heard the story three or four different times, and I I still I, I still I'm trying not to cry right now, um, but I still don't understand how Josh is alive today. I don't get it. Um, he shouldn't be. Um, but what I again and getting back to my previous point, what I what I take away from the Phillips family story is is a couple things. Number one, 
together as a family. They've endured so much, and they love each other more because of it. Uh, there were a couple of people. I think Jennifer, his his wonderful sister, who is um, just just so caring and so kind. Um, she told me about how she was almost grateful that that Josh had dealt with this because it brought them closer together as a family, and it, it gave them a a shared identity where they really did bond together in a way that they probably or or may not have otherwise done so. Um, that was incredible. To hear a family member say that after so much suffering, it was, that was really special. The second thing that I took away was Josh is an incredible person. Um, obviously this would be a good story, uh, were he, you know, the, the, the typical, what you might think of a, a meathead jock of, you know, he's arrogant, he's, he's bossy, he's all about himself, but he isn't. He isn't. He's, he's a 100% um, authentically good young man. Um, we we had the opportunity to. Uh, one of the things that Josh likes to do is to take out his four wheeler or his dad's four wheeler, um, and go tool around in the the mountains in the foothills and around Sam and kind of clears his mind and, and lets him get away to think. And and um, it was really fun, and and again admirable. Uh, we would. Um, we would stop, you know, we, we had our cameras out there, we had our truck, and we needed to change things around. And he told us that he did this. He would actually, he would actually stop what, we, what he was doing while we were taking a break or reorienting the cameras or whatever. And he would collect trash in the foothills of, of you know, the, the salmon foothills. And, and it wasn't for show. It absolutely was not for show. He, <laughs> he's incredible. He, he never complains, and, and people whitewash these things sometimes, but, you know, they say, oh, he's, he's a great guy, he's a great guy, just, just generalizing, because we want, we want to be known that we have good friends, and they're, they're all good, you know, whatever. Josh Phillips is an authentically good person, and he doesn't complain. He never complains. Um, I, I, not one word of complaint did I hear from him, nor did I hear that anything like that from the people who love him and know him the best. Um, how often do we complain? How often do we complain that, that maybe the, the traffic's a little heavier than, than we think it is or should be on our commute? How often do we complain about um, maybe somebody taking longer than, than we think they should in the, in the grocery store? Or, you know, maybe we have allergies on, on a certain day. Um, to spend time with Josh was incredibly humbling for me because I, I'm one of those that, that complains way too much about life. Um, and I don't cherish the, the moments. Um, it was it was an incredible experience, uh, and I wouldn't trade it for the world. I I, I joked with my team. I cried more, more than uh, John Boehner, <laughs> and and I'm not kidding you. We actually during during the middle of our time in Salmon, I actually went to the store and bought a box of tissues. Uh, primarily, I th I thought it was for the family. Because it, I knew that this would be an emotional thing, but but I ended up using them. It was me, um, and uh, my my colleagues Raina and Matt will attest to that. Um, it it was crazy. Um, but the third thing I got out from from this experience was just that government is so silly sometimes. Josh and his wonderful family live forty five miles away from the Montana border where all forms of CBD oil are completely legal. Um, if Josh were to, or his family, if they were to cross that border and get Josh some CBD oil, they couldn't bring it back, or they would risk, you know, jail time or a fine, something like that, some penalty. In 2015, Governor Otter had the chance to give Josh access to CBD oil, not pay for it, not, not the access that liberals talk about that, hey, we're going to give you this, this entitlement and we're going to pay for it, um, but real access where it's, hey, we trust you and your family to make the best decision um, for you after doing your research. Um, if you think Josh Phillips is going to get high on CBD oil, you've got another thing coming. Um, Josh doesn't even know if it'll work. It, he really doesn't. He hopes but all he wants is a, a chance, a, a chance to try for a better life. Um, I, was, I was so sad thinking about how simple 
it could be for the Phelps family. They could easily pull up their, their roots and move 45 miles or 90 miles, I think it's 90 miles from Salmon to Missoula, and move there um, and build, build a new life um, just to give Josh access to uh, this drug that may or may not work. But is that really what we want to do with our to our fellow Idahoans? We really want to drive out um, people who are suffering um, because we don't trust them to make the wise decisions that, that I know that they're equipped to make. I don't think that's good policy. Um, and I hope people will, will re-examine that in the future. Um, for right now, I want to close this up um, by just urging everybody in Salmon um, we decided to bring this to Salmon, Idaho, because this this we we're going to hold a screening on October 27th at the River Cinemas in Salmon. Um, we we originally weren't going to do that. We were just going to put it out on YouTube and just just say, oh hey, this is um, this is a film y'all need to see it, and and just leave it at that. But at the end of the filming, um, I had developed a, a distinct love for not only the Phillips family, but for the, the salmon community at large. Um, and I'm somebody, to get into my background a little bit, not, not too much, but in my past, I moved around from city to city to city to city. My dad had a job that, that forced us to move around a lot. Um, I've never been in a city where the community was really invested in my success or my family's success. I mean, we had neighbors, we had friends, of course. But what they have in Salmon, generally, but also the love that they have for Josh Phillips, knowing his situation, is incredible. I've never experienced it. And this community's love for Josh Phillips is indescribable. Um, and we wanted to... There's no way to... to it's not our role. There's, there's no way to pay back Salmon for what they've done for Josh. And again, that's not our job. But we wanted to... We wanted to pay back Salmon and, um, and let them know that their efforts weren't in vain, if they ever thought they were, and let them know that that the world sees what they've done. The world sees the love that Salmon has for Josh and for his family. Um, they say... You know, and this is a politically charged phrase, but they say that, you know, it takes a village to raise a kid. I, I believe that was a Hillary. It, it's been a, a, you know, saying for a long time, but it was a politically charged by Hillary Clinton, I believe. Um, I believe that it does take a village. It doesn't take a government-run village. It doesn't take, in fact, in, in this case, the government's getting in the way. It doesn't take a government to raise a child. It takes a community of dedicated and willing people with good, open, honest hearts and with good intents to raise a child and to make a community better. That's what I saw in Salmon. I've never seen it before in real life. I've never, there, the love that I felt in that community for this young man was palpable. It was palpable and I've, I've, I haven't forgotten. I've, I keep that right here because it, like I said, it was just incredible. So, this is going to be a special night, Salmon. Um, I'm going to grab, hopefully I'm going to grab some some dinner at the Savage Grill. I believe that's what it's called. We ate there when we were filming. It's delicious. Absolutely delicious. Um, and then we're going to go to the River Cinemas, and we're going to screen the film um, 7 p.m. at the, the River Cinemas in, in downtown Salmon. Um, it's going to be a special night, and I hope that you'll join us. I hope that you will take the time um, out of your busy schedules. I understand life is busy, um, but this is a this is a one time thing, and and um, Gary and Jeanette and Josh and Otto will all be there, and I'm looking forward to it so much to be able to spend more time with them and to um, feel of their love and and to share Josh's story with you. Um, this is a story that needs to be told, as I as I mentioned before. It's this story is too important and too um, too special to not be told. So the Idaho Freedom Foundation thanks you for you know your interest in this story, and I hope I hope to see you if you live in Salmon or a nearby surrounding area. I hope to see you on October twenty uh, seventh 
at the River Cinemas in Salmon. We will be holding screenings in Idaho Falls on November 19th and uh, in Boise on November 17th. Let's see. Idaho Falls was the 15th, yeah, and uh, uh, Boise was the 17th. Anyway, um, if you have questions, my email is dustin at idahofreedom.org. If you want to reserve your seats, go to hopevetoed.com, and uh, you can reserve your seats. You can also email me to reserve your seats. But uh, I hope to see you there. Uh, I'll be there, and, and um, we're going to have a good time. It's going to be special. Um, and really, if anyone wants to bring me a box of tissues, I, I would appreciate it. Um, Anyway, have a good night. Thanks for uh, indulging me.